Good morning, folks. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, about 6.30 in May. And I've had a few questions regarding how I bonded and grounded my array. So I thought I'd just drive out there and I'll just show you. All right, give me a minute. I'm out here at my array, and I thought I'd share with you how I ground it and bonded this array. Uh, this is a Sinclair ground mount that I purchased from Scott Hunt at Practical Preppers LLC. You can look them up on the internet. He also has a YouTube channel, Engineer775. He's a great guy to deal with. He's got a lot of knowledge. Watch his videos. I encourage you to do so. But at any rate, I bought this uh I bought this ground mount from him and I shot some videos earlier last year of how I installed this mount. Now depending on what area you live in in the country. Your grounding and bonding requirements might be a little different than what I've done here. Okay, so I'm not advising you on how to ground and bond your system. I'm just showing you what I've done. Uh, fortunately for me, I live in one of the few free areas in the country in rural Alabama and I don't have to deal with inspectors I don't have to deal with utility people uh, interfering with my project uh, but I was careful to try to meet code requirements in this area even though I didn't have any inspection to have to worry with your area might be different I don't know okay all right this some codes depends on which code you you read you may be required to put down a ground rod uh, and then bond your frame and your equipment to that ground rod in my case i did not put down a ground rod for a couple reasons number one each of these posts are driven about seven feet in the ground so there's not a better ground rod system that I could install than these four inch by seven inch uh, posts. So that's my ground rod for this system, or five of these posts. Typically your ground rod, if you're putting in a ground rod, you get a galvanized or a copper clad, and they'll range from, um, half inch to three quarter inch, seven to eight feet long, plus you could put multiple rods down. But I didn't feel the need for it. I'm using these galvanized steel posts as my ground rod system. Now, these posts are tied in to this ground bridge that I have right here. So all, all the system is tied together with galvanized steel. Galvanized steel is conductive. It's not a good conductor, but it's, it's good for grounding purposes, okay? All right, so all this is tied together, and this ground bridge is tied to that post. Now I have three bare number six coppers tied to this ground bridge. And the one to the left... You see the little loop. I left that little loop in there in case I wanted to use it, extend it for something else later. Um, the one to the left goes, it, it's in the same ditch with my PV circuit wires that go underground. Back over to my uh, 
solar power building, which is right up over there. That's about 425 feet. And that's a, a bare copper buried in the ground. And that's another way of developing a grounding system is to bury your copper, bare copper in the ground. Because what you're trying to do is connect this steel to the ground. And when the ground, we're talking about the ground, the dirt. <clears throat> These other two bare coppers, they just go up in the ground and come up this conduit. This conduit uh, stubs in the ground about 18 inches. My PV circuits are direct burial. So that there's not a conduit that runs from here all the way to my power building. It's direct burial. And I showed you what I did with that in an earlier video. So this is all bonded together. I have my post, five posts driven in the ground. They're tied into this uh, number six bare copper that runs all the way back to my power shed, which I run, connects with my utility grounding system. And then these two number six wires that are on the right, one go into each of these panels each of these combiner boxes. Now, one of the first things I noticed is that my tags that I put on here have not survived the elements. So I'm going to do something different. All right, this is, uh, this is energized, so I'm going to be careful. You can see with these surge protective devices these are midnight solar 600 volt rated uh, devices and they are on so we've got some voltage coming out but this bond this uh number six ground comes to this power lug and this is a copper to aluminum ground lug From there, I bond this can, and the grounds from the surge protective devices are connected here. All right, that's how I'm bonding my combiner box. That's how I'm grounding my SPDs through this grounding system. And we can talk more about these components in a bit. All right, it's important that all your metal components are bonded together. And to accomplish that, you need to use some appropriate connectors. I wanna, I wanna show you something here with this meter. See if I can do it while I'm on camera. I'm gonna pause this just a minute. Okay, I'm using a Flute uh, T5-1000 multimeter. I wanna show you something here on this frame. Okay, I've got continuity in this galvanized steel. But when you come to this aluminum frame on the uh, array, you gonna see something, all right? I'm touching them. Now these aluminum frames, that's not bare aluminum. It has a anodized coating on it that you gotta get through in order to make a connection to the metal. So you have to use some special connectors for that. Now, if I take this and I really shove it hard up in there i can get continuity so it's not difficult to break it through that little anodized coating but you do have to break through it otherwise you're not going to have continuity so there are special connectors that are made that will do that for you 
I think in some of the older systems before these type of connectors were in, used to use a, a ground connection for each panel. But, but with these newer connect connectors, you don't have to do that. This frame is grounded here and bonded here. And then this connector right here which these end connectors are, are just a little bit different. They don't have the, uh, they're a little bit different, but if you look at this connector, see the serrated teeth right there? And then you also see the serration right here and also on this other end. When this is installed, it'll be installed like this. And this is, this is the connector that goes between panels. And when you clamp it down, these teeth right here dig into the, through the anodized portion of this frame. You can see it right there. So what this does, this connects, bonds the galvanized steel down there because of this, these ribs here through this bolt and then to the frame with these little rib teeth. And it ties this frame to this frame and that bonds these two frames together. And then every frame is bonded back to the next frame. And in this case, you know, I've got four, four of these clamps on each, uh, each run up so everything is bonded in multiple places so one clamp goes bad or whatever it's not gonna be that big a deal you could have another path now this 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 array is out here in my field uh i have cows and i have goats and i have sheep and they haven't really bothered it except for a couple of things which i'll show you but the biggest problem is these dead blasted birds they like to sit up there and you can see people i guess birds are the same way when they gather together they put out a lot of bs well they're putting out a lot of bs right there All right, that's uh, that's how I bonded all this stuff together. Now it's important to me uh, when I worked with the utility company as an engineer. I was the lead engineer at a power company for ten years, but that was thirty years ago. Um, we were our best practices that we found when you had remote structures. Even though at the time it wasn't required in the code that you bond the ground at the remote structure to the ground back to the utility. And that seemed to have mitigated a lot of lightning related problems. I've been on systems where remote structures had their own independent ground which at the time in the code was acceptable. And I think it may very well be acceptable on these remote arrays, just to bond all the steel here to this post, since this post they're setting, you know, it's acting like a ground rod. But I've always found it better to tie the bond, the grounds from remote structures back to utility. And that helps mitigate uh, but some of the problems with lightning, lightning strikes and transients. <clears throat> now, why is that important? Well, what, what I found years ago is that a lightning strike, if it, if, the remote structures were not tied together, grounds were not tied together, then 
a lightning strike near one structure, we'd raise the voltage level of the ground. And instead of uh, that voltage is going to radiate out from that structure. Uh, so what we were finding is that a lot of times that lightning uh, strike would induce voltages on the power leads or communication leads because of the, we found a lot with the old KU band satellite systems when you put up the steel structure and the steel big eight foot dish uh, a lot of installers were just installing the uh, communications and cr control cables between the between the dish and the frame and the house lightning would strike on the ground somewhere near the dish and then it would follow the communication cable all the way back into the house and destroy the equipment. But once we started bonding the structure ground, the utility ground, those problems went away. And there may be some reasons that you don't want to bond these things together. Uh, I don't know what they would be. And it could be that you've got older structures and there's existing power there and there's no bond between the grounds. Okay. You know, if, if you're not had a problem, then I wouldn't worry with it. But to me, the best practice is to tie the grounds from remote structures together. Even though I, I don't think the code would probably call this a structure. I'm just calling it a structure. They're probably using the term structure as a building, but at any rate, that's uh. That's my thoughts on it, uh, on the bonding.